What's up, players? Welcome to Chip Tooth Gaming's E3 2019 coverage. I'm your host, Mike Double D Doherty, and alongside me today is Sean So Nasty himself, Sean Flowers. What's up? Ready for I'm ready for this. I'm hot as balls right now. I'm sweating. It is day one of E3. We have covered Xbox. We've covered EA, yep. and now we're closing it out with Bethesda. All right. It was an alright conference. All right. um, not a whole lot there. Felt like this was a update. Uh, I felt like this could have been like a non-E3 thing. It could have been, honestly. Like, they're pretty much letting us know that the games they already have are going to get better. Which, I guess is reassuring. Which, I mean, I don't know if that's what you come to E3 to, to find out. How about we <laughs> come to E3 to find out you nailed it the first time and you're going to deliver another experience that's just as good. That's what I feel like E3 is. Like, you, you're going to show up to the Super Bowl with your second stringer? But at least they touched on it. You're like, playing your bench on the Super Bowl. That's what this felt like. I feel like they just addressed all the elephants in the room, so the internet can't really just, like, what about this? You guys going to leave this game? Yeah. You didn't, you didn't talk about Fallout 76. Who the fuck cares? Game's dead. Apparently not, because we're getting a battle royale. Cool. <laughs> That's how you pick it. First announcement. <laughs> battle royale. So... We got Fallout updates coming, essentially, trying to fix the game. Great. Yeah, Should have so been fixed on launch. They're realizing they're having no story was a bad idea, and having no human NPCs to even make a story was a bad idea. So now we're going to get both. <laughs> Woo! We can get a story, and we can have actual uh, NPCs to help us, you know, track that story along as we grow our character, which, great. Cool. I feel like I'm doing this for a purpose now, not just doing this, like, mindlessly. Just standing around with my dick in my hand. Yeah, I'm just walking around all the God, what a disaster. And Battle Royale. And Battle uh, Royale. Why the fuck would you put Battle Royale in a fucking... You know, I don't completely disagree with it because Fallout 76 is a game where, like, there's not much reason to really, like, attack other players. Like, because you, you get penalties for it. It's, this is, like, the penalties... Penalty system is bad, but, like, I don't want to get a penalty, especially if I'm, like, trying to level up my shit. So, with this battle royale, at least, like, you feel like you're, there's multiplayer. Because at this point, it's like, everyone's kind of, like, co-op on the same team and walking around. Would you, uh, play uh, football with a hockey stick? That's how I feel like this is. Hey. Fallout's mechanics and the fucking, what's it called, the, the vats? Huh? How the fuck are you going to make that work in a battle royale? Vats isn't perfect. And I, I like that. Approach. You're playing football with a hockey stick. That's not true. Yes, you are. That's not true. This is going to be so bad. Because you can kill people Dead. outside of the battle royale. Like I said. Dead. There's just no point to doing it. Dead. Yeah, you know why? It's because they realized, oh, our fucking mechanics suck. You can't kill people. No. We're not going to make That's PvP. That's not why. That's not why. <laughs> no. It's so bad. You know why there's vats? You know the real story behind vats? Yeah. It's because the mechanics were so bad that they needed a fix. Without redoing the whole thing. I love that. And yet, in 2019, we're still playing with vats. So, do you just not like Fallout series? Is that what this is? I mean, it's... I hate being like Gravy, I feel like... You sound real biased right now. Like, let them try to fix the game, bro. Battle Royale doesn't fix your game. It makes it more... I guess it makes it more enticing to play. Yeah, what about Call of Duty? Real enticed to play that, huh? Hey. Boom! Ayo! Ayo! I bought. Right I bought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but would I play buy Call of Duty without that? Yeah, I would. I would. Oh, would you? I would. In 2019, we're in battle royale. And do I play the battle royale Call of Duty? No, I only play the multiplayer. So touche. But at least in a game like Fallout, it's a thing you could be enticed to play. Because I'm not gonna lie, walk around fucking whatever you call it, the the wasteland, isn't all that fun. But it's a wasteland. Making somebody feel some type of way because I just shot him in the face, and now they have to go back to the lobby. It's a little bit fun. But but around the face. Uh interesting. Um, I guess. But it depends on how it works. Like I, I kind of really wonder, like, is it going to be like a weapon? Like, how many weapons are going to allow in the game or in that battle royale mode? Am I going to get melee weapons? Am I going to get hit with a shovel randomly? It's just dropping into an arena, and you have to scavenge for food. Yeah, I'm just going to walk in and get a, like. A I look a two by four. I'm supposed to use that until I find a pistol. I don't know. Mm, interesting. I, I yeah. Interesting announcement from there from uh, the Fallout side. Then we got. Well, this is not in order, but we also got Elder Scrolls Blades. The Switch. The Switch. 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 Switch.
Um, so it was, uh, Elder Scrolls Blades is a mobile game right now. They put it on the Switch, and it's going to sell millions. Alexander Dayu, he's going to buy one. Honestly, I think that was a good move on their part. Very good move on their part. It, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, I think it makes more sense on the Switch, in all honesty, than it does on a phone. From the, the, from the gameplay I've seen. Switch, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. Alexander Dayu, let us know. I know you bought that fucking garbage on everything. I feel like it is on the Switch. That, I feel like that itself would kind of make Blades on the Switch a little weird. Like, if I have Skyrim on the Switch, why would I get Blades on my Switch? Even though I know it's two separate games, but more or less the same. Uh, I mean, it's, I think they are very different games. I don't think you can really compare the two. Mechanic-wise, no, but as far as, like, time period and area, and I feel like they have the same weapons, more or less, and, like, the creatures and the enemies are pretty much the same. I, I definitely think this is going to be niche, exp- but, but, I mean, what is it going to be, 10, 15 bucks, 30 bucks? For Blades? Yeah. Uh, as a mobile game, I think Blades is only like 5 bucks. 5 bucks? No, that's not bad. I mean, I think, I think, I think Skyrim people like Alexander Dayu is just (laughs) obsessed with whatever they can get. So, I mean, if they put this out there, I'm sure they're going to spend five bucks and get it because they just want more of that Skyrim. They got that Skyrim itch. Yeah. You guys got any more of them Elder Scrolls? (laughs) Um, so cool announcement. Uh, then we got something called Deathloop. Interesting game. How do you feel about that? I still don't know what the fuck it's about, but interesting. Uh, it was, uh, you're trying to kill each other. There's two different factions. That's what I got from it. Like, I, I didn't really get, like, that trailer didn't tell me anything about the gameplay. I didn't understand anything about the game. I just thought what you said was interesting when you said, like, the two protagonists were black, which you don't really get in a lot of games these days. Two black protagonists, which I agree with you. That was the only thing I thought interesting in that trailer. Yeah. You said that, but besides that, I didn't really, like, I watched it. The whole little segment they did, but like, I didn't really like, okay, Deathloop. And then you got these French guys talking about Deathloop. And how fucking awesome it is. And then you see it, and it's just like... It's real it's fucking awesome. With a gun and shit, and you're just like, okay, it's gonna be a shooter. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, yeah. It didn't tell you anything about the gameplay. It's interesting. I like I I like what they showed, but I don't really know how that translates in the gameplay. So, uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah. That's what it feels like, bro. No gameplay on anything. Um, so I was interested in it. Then we got Ghostwire Tokyo. That shit looks good. Again, we we just talked about this on uh, our Xbox uh, E3 oh, unboxing. No, our impressions. We just did. Okay. You and me. Really? Yeah. About Killzone. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it, it, it's easy to get fooled from, like, just non-in-game kind of shit. Mm-hmm. But the game looks beautiful. I got Kojima vibes. There was no gameplay, really. But at the same time, I feel like the story behind it. Kind of like, yeah. I don't know if like it's an apocalypse though, or you like, there's a virus going around. Don't know what the fuck's going on, but you can't stop watching. And uh, it was really cool to see. It was one of those things where it's, this is interesting. Um, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I'm with it. I'm for it. I'm it. I stand with it. Like I stand it. And then there's that fucking uh, the dude on. with the mask and the the. And then Ghost. and then cuts no gameplay so cool I can't wait to fucking play that game no it's cool I'm excited for it uh, just because it I'm sorry not excited I'm interested I gotta start changing my thing that would be dope with actual like action elements to it I'd be for it um that's kind of what I got I, that's kind of what I got from Deathloop um because yeah because I. I mean, the name implies it, right? Loop. So it's like going back and replaying things and going and trying different routes. That's what I would assume what that would be. But then with this, Ghostwire, it's one of those things where it's... I just want to see more. Based off that trailer, I don't really feel like it's going to be a lot of action. Like, it's yeah, probably going to be some action elements, but it looks just mainly story-driven. That's why I said, like, what if it's, like, so that type of, like... Um, what if it's, like, even, like, um, Mass Effect, where it's, like... There's consequences. You have to make choices, and you know, obviously, the characters relate to you and you know, grow with you and things like that, which would be pretty cool. It, it would be, and that's what's hard about what we were shown this first day at E3 <laughs> is you don't really have a lot to go off of, so you're just like, oh, okay, cool. 
uh, what happened to gameplay, guys? <laughs> Did uh, I feel like there's a whole section missing of this? But your conference is two hours live or long, so I don't know if there's really anything missing. I think you just forgot. What does it look like? I know. <laughs> That's how I feel. So I mean, cool. Interested. Uh, then we got Doom Internal. We got a release date. Got uh, another trailer. Looks good. Looks like Doom. Don't really give a fuck about Doom. Thank you. I'm glad you tested that. I was gonna say it. I know if you're gonna get deep into it. <laughs> fuck is Doom. I don't give a fuck about the Doom. It's f like it's perfect for people like me that just like want to plug in mm -hmm. and have a game to play. Mm -hmm. That's what it is to me. That's all Doom's ever really been to me. It's never been like a invested headphones on and not a podcast playing, but the game audio. That's how you know a game has me. No. If I put in the headphones and it's not plugged into my phone and it's plugged into my controller, uh, that game has me. If my it's plugged into the it's plugged into the phone, it's a mindless game where I'm like, yeah, I got thirty minutes to kill. Let's go fucking kill some uh, fucking aliens. I don't know what they kill in Doom. <laughs> everything Doom Slayer, right? they kill everything in Doom. So yeah, Doom Slayer. Um, so cool. Um, again, I I I, I feel so no no hype thing. I don't smell nothing. Ah, uh, my nose is broken. My nose broke from fucking nothing. There's I no hype stank to C3. I, I don't know if my nose is broke from it. My nose is working just fine. Nothing broke it. I just don't I'm smell it. Lie. I ain't smelling what you're stepping in. Yeah. But, uh, it, yeah, I hate being that guy because I feel like I'm, I've been so negative on everything so far that's shown. Even though a lot of the stuff I'm, I fuck it's with, it's just where's the, where's the game? You didn't see where's the game part? It's like seeing like a hella movie trailer. That's not even like seeing movie trailers, but at least you get to see the movie. Anyway. And what is about? You don't like and that's, but that's the hard thing about this E3 so far. But like hopefully can't... more stuff will like we'll get demos, like people going to see demos of shit, and then yeah. we'll get articles written back. I'm excited for that. There's some gameplay on some of the games, like um, the Gears Five we talked about in the Xbox trailer. I saw some gameplay on that, which I thought was pretty good. Cool. Yeah, I know about the game, the mode they in they introduced. Yeah. So, hopefully within the next couple weeks we see some gameplay leaks. We, one thing we did see on gameplay what? Uh, was Wolfenstein, the new Wolfenstein. Mm -hmm. uh, exciting. Uh, they're going to do a VR Wolfenstein as well. well cool. It it's, it's uh, pilot, like si yeah, Cyber uh, Pilot. Got it here. Uh, VR. It's cool. It's a flying simulator. Interesting for uh, Wolfenstein, but okay, whatever. Uh, I'm for it. More VR, just bring it, bring it on. The main Wolfenstein though looks amazing. Um, cool gameplay trailer, which I liked. Yeah. Cool gameplay, cool trailer. I I love that world. I want more of it. I, I need to jump into it. Um, still, uh, I I am hyped for Wolfenstein. You know, Wolfenstein's you know, is. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like I want it to sit because I want it to be able to play it all the way through. Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein 2, and then uh, Wolfenstein New Order. So I just want to knock them all out. So I'm excited for it um, because I kind of want to build up this one and play the other two and then get to this one. And then I'll have that complete satisfaction loop. So but, is this the last game of that series? or not, I'm, not the last one, but I mean it's the newest one. So it gives me a reason to play the other two. Okay. Gives me some time, but cool. I, I mean, and then the last thing that they talked about was uh, what they call it. I have it here somewhere. Orin. Orion. Orion. The little um, server, not server. Yeah, so streaming it's basically a yeah. yeah. They say it's a streaming service, but it's really not. It is a uh, game engine assistant for streaming games. So it's supposed to make it's, you have bad internet. It's supposed to help you be able to play the game smoothly still. Or it's basically, I'm a game developer. Oh, yeah. I am gonna launch my game on Stadia and the Xbox streaming service and the PlayStation streaming service, and I want my game to run smooth through the internet. Yeah. Google, they're all worrying about the infrastructure and shit, but how well our game's gonna work? TBD. Uh, Bethesda's got you covered. If you're a game developer, we're going to put that shit in your game. So you're going to take your game engine, you're going to take uh, Orion, and you're going to put them together, and it's going to work. It's basically going to make your streaming experience better. That's what I got from it. Um, cool. It's uh, another way for them to make money and kind of take a cut of game games in terms of like yeah. the sales. Because obviously they'll get a cut of how many games you sell because you're using their engine essentially 
so you're paying for two engines now, but whatever. Um, Industry changing, maybe? Uh, maybe, and we'll see. The whole streaming shit is up in there. Who knows? The concept of Orion is possibly industry changing. It's uh, steroids. It's steroids yeah. for games, yeah. right? Uh, games that are going through these streaming systems. So if I, if Nick DiPaolo is going to be launching Adams Ascending on Stadia, he's going to want Orin or Orion. I don't know why I keep calling Orin. It's late, guys. It's starting to get to me. Uh, so that's cool. But again, very underwhelming. Very, very underwhelming. Uh, I think that's something that's going to get built upon as the year goes on. I don't feel like that was kind of like a... That was for the developers when they for, for the consumers, I don't believe. Well, I'm not even just talking about that announcement. I'm saying as a press conference, as a whole. As a whole? Underwhelming. Uh, like I said, they were just trying to address all the elephants in the room about all their previous game titles, which I think they might have should have done, but also had to be said. So I feel like they were kind of put in this awkward state where like, okay, we fucked up with Fallout 76. Uh, we got to talk about that. Uh, we fucked up with no, <laughs> we, <laughs> we have to talk about our Elder Scrolls because that's probably like our biggest game right now. So we have to talk about the new content we're gonna push into that. Um, they they uh, brought up Rage too. They, there's some yeah. new shit coming for that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that, that's that's kind of where I'm at. Where it's like, uh, all right, Bethesda. Um, it could go. I mean, out of ten, what would you rate this conference? The Bethesda conference. They said a lot of things I wanted to hear. I'm not going to lie. They did say a lot of things I wanted to hear. Didn't see a lot of gameplay. We saw some gameplay, like we said, for Doom. So you got updates. Like, there's some updates. So you smell the hype thing for some updates? There's, some, there's updates to games I already bought that I kind of just put in the fucking back of my closet. But now that I've realized they're going to try to fix these games, I might just bring it back out, which is good to hear. At least I feel like I haven't wasted my money because they're still actually trying with this game, which is good to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm glad I heard that. But, like, as an E3 like goer, I do I wouldn't give a fuck about the updates at all. I don't give a fuck about the no. updates. No. What would you rank it? Uh, Stop being a coward. Stop being an Andreas. <laughs> Five. Really? That's Five. funny. I was gonna say four. I, I a five because of the updates. It could have been lower. They didn't really there wasn't too many. What new games did they release? They talk about this uh, Death Loop. Uh, Death Loop Ghost and Wire. Ghostwire. That's it. Right. And the VR. For Wolfenstein. I don't even count those as a new game. That's and then that Wolfenstein mobile game, the kid game, the animated game, that's mobile? What mobile? What game? There's like an animated game that they announced. I must it was like that. a kid, like animated, like cartoon. It looked like a cartoon. Oh, I have Wolfenstein? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sean goes three. Actually, three. Three, three, three is their game. So they had two games, three games, I guess, apparently. But really, two if you're a console player that you even if you wanted to hear about and you didn't get to see gameplay for those games because they were kind of just like really ambiguous with it so like what the fuck did I just watch yeah but you understood those updates so far nah yeah, well, let us know what you thought about the Bethesda conference let us know in the comments down below tell us all the things you want wish we could have got out of the Bethesda com conference, what you liked about the Bethesda conference, and what you hope to see on day two of E3. Leave it in the comments down below. <coughs> like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, I'm your host, Mike Double D Doherty, and alongside me today is Fat Kid Flowers, a.k.a. Sean So Nasty. You stole it right out of my mouth. Hey, I'm gonna give it back to you. Beat me to it. <laughs> and thank you for watching Chip Dude Gaming's E3 2019 coverage and keep it locked right here at youtube.com forward slash Chip Tooth Gaming for more in-depth E3 2019 coverage. Until next time, players.